Basically, I my person. It was in the beginning. It was just my personal project. I was very interested in a different uh, religions. Um, it's person. It was really personal interest, and I took photos of some incredible uh, rituals which still exist in India, and uh, with adults as well. And then one day, Kasha, the organizer of this exhibition, she was just going through all my photos and she just loved the photos of children. She thought that I have a, a way to communicate to them and to photograph them. So then she asked me if it was possible to do some more uh, children, uh, like to do some more photos of children. And this is how the project came alive. What do you think about the location, the choice of the location? I mean, as a photographer, how do you respond to it? I'm impressed. <laughs> I actually think that location is great in the way it adds value to the photos. Like, and uh, the thing that it's like a natural environment, uh, it looks, I don't know, I think it adds value and it looks dramatic. And uh, uh, it's also impressive to see my photos so big. Can you tell us how long have you been learning photography? I mean, how um, old is your association with this farm? Actually, not so long, just for two years. Uh, but um, I, I, so I was very honored to participate, and that they asked me to participate. And, uh, and you're staying in Chennai, so uh, why yes. have you made Chennai your home? You know, and why are you in India? Basically because of my husband. He got to, uh, he was working in Chennai for the last two years and in the end of this month we are going back to France. Oh, so, okay. yeah, no said. I love it. Okay. And can you tell us a little bit about your relationship with photojournalism? I've heard you speaking to a lot of people here yeah. about, you know, what is it to be a photojournalist and how do you take your pictures? What is your relationship? With the subject who uh, you're not just taking a photograph, you, you have a rapport, a relationship. So for the benefit of our students who will be mm -hmm. watching this interview later, sure. can you tell us about how do you look at photojournalism and what is photojournalism for you? Um, for me, it's like I have to give as much information as possible. But at the same time, there should be emotions, there should be uh, movement. It shouldn't be just a static photo of someone standing. You get a lot of information from expressions of people on their faces. And basically, you should be a non-biased, like you have to, this is the fact, you have to take this photo, but it should be the right moment, like you should, uh, like for the journalism, it's like you're taking the photo of fact or an event, but with seeing the light, good composition, uh, good characters, a proper relationship with your subject. Like it should come from heart. You don't have to speak. Uh, the, the, some photographers go and talk to the subject to, to make it at ease. Uh, some photographers don't. It's just you just look at each other you just just a feeling I do both sometimes it's just uh, when children I ask permission of adults but I try not to disturb them because sometimes the magic is gone you go talk and it's just gone so you can start talking if you see something interesting happening you can start talking to people who are not involved directly and they might suggest can you take photos or not I'm just saying it's a, it's a beautiful location uh, I'm just traveling here and I'm just here for a month and uh, Kasha told me about this and uh, she said it starts at 5 o'clock or something so as a location, as a great location she said it used to be the old distillery right? and the black and whites are beautiful also and the scale of it is lovely the you massive know. scale of these photographs uh, and so. uh, Are you a photographer? Or I, I'm an architect 
I'm an architect, so basically this is the arts field. So as an architect, uh, as a location is beautiful. So what so. do you think? I mean, it's a, it's a location that's fallen to disuse. Obviously, it's got, you know, it doesn't have any value, any use. So what do you think about this idea in a country like India where, where we have so many such locations yes, yes. which are just, just, just reviling away, nothing's happened to them. And this whole transformation of that space into something like this, can you comment on it? Yeah, that's why it's, it's because it's, it's unused, it's dilapidated, correct? But then to have some art in that space, so as an environment is beautiful, because normally when you go to a gallery, you know, the gallery is very, very pristine, you know? It's all air conditioned, proper lighting. Yeah, it isn't. It's, it's sort of art being put in nature. And anyone from the street can come. You don't have to pay something. Like, you have to go into, inside a gallery. So this is an open environment. And it's wonderful. So someone who can appreciate the, you know, the, the design of the district, even these little canals. I don't know what it was used for. This was to make liquor, I guess. Because this was a distillery, right? So as a location and having art, it's a very nice melange, I would call it. As, so. Can you tell us your name and where are you from? Uh, Akhil is my name, first name. Uh, I live in Toronto, Canada, and I've been traveling. I was in, uh, where was I? I started off in Goa, I went to Hyderabad, then I went to Chennai, stayed a couple of days, and never been to this part of the country. And then I'm here for a month. And Kasha, I got to know Kasha, I guess, it's because uh, I was trying to get accommodation, and she helped me, so I'll, I'll be able to see her now, who was this lady, because on emails or we were corresponding. And it's, it's your first visit to Pondicherry, right? Absolutely. And, and what's your response to Pondicherry as a I, town? I, I, it's, it's a lovely, it's lo what, I, what I love, the air is clear compared to say Chennai. Less traffic, vehicular traffic. For, um, you find people just walking, walking, cycling, cycling very lazily, you know. They don't have like uh, uh, sports cycles, they're simple cycles and uh, scooters and motorbikes. So it's a very environmentally conscious type of a little town, a town, a city, whatever you call it. So that I was impressed on. So you can just walk. Like where I was staying, he said, why don't you, why don't you um, rent a bike, motorbike? So I said, no, walking, I'll just walk. And, uh, and then also over here, you see in Pondicherry, the local, you know, for Pongal. I was very fortunate to be in it, to see the art is coming onto the streets. It's not hidden. So it's everywhere. So that's lovely. And, um, and I just see it's a very laid back type of thing. Nobody's rushing. And uh, it's a lovely place also to retire. So I'm just saying that way. Uh, but as a, as, a, as a lovely place. And you get some of the, you know, you get the, again, a, a melange of the two architectures, the French colonial and then the Indian or Southern architecture. And so, but then you always find sometimes they're not kept in a good, uh, good state of repair. And so, mm -hmm. But as a location, I would give whoever thought of this location is 100, 100 bucks. As a location is beautiful. Because you can walk anywhere. It's nothing is paved. You know, you can walk over dirt, over grass, over anything. And then enjoy, take photographs and go. Black and white, I love it because it's all shade and shadows. But when you're a photojournalist, they require photos and colors. So yeah. like... It's not for photojournalists, I can do whatever I want. No, premium, premium. But at the same time, I try to keep very photojournalistic style, like it's what is happening and this is the... The, the, yeah, the, the location the, I was telling the, uh, the group, yes, beautiful location. Thank you. And I, as you also said, you're not making any judgment in this. No. You just photograph state, what you see. Yes, I'm and trying you to just define. put a little explanation on yes. it. Okay. People can decide for themselves. Yeah, yeah. One thing I would have, um, if, if just a little, is to know where it was taken, or maybe you purposely didn't put it, uh, mm, the mm. year and when it was taken. To All the taking within 2013, actually okay. it's one year work. Okay. Um, I didn't do it on purpose, but at the it's same good. time, maybe some communities wouldn't like to be disturbed, because in some communities I was the only one and brought by people who live there yes, yes. and... Uh, okay, so I take my comment back, yes. <laughs> no, it's good because it, it's, it's just a simple thing, very, very simple. Yeah, um, most of the photos are from Tamil Nadu, mostly Chennai, ah, and oh. monks are from the Ladakh. Ladakh. Oh, Ladakh. Okay. Yes. So those two They're the places, only, only yeah. two places, yeah, okay. I did in India. Very, very nice. Thank you. Felicitation. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
begin? How did, I so How did your work in photography begin? Oh, actually, I was very annoyed. I was annoying my husband by saying, "Can you please take photo of this uh, and that and that?" And one day he just couldn't stand it, and when he just gave me take his old camera. camera and was like, "Do whatever you want." Uh, and then I started one course after another course, and then I became very interested in photojournalism, mm. and uh, and this is how it all started. And what's your connection with India? I have been, and um, this is my second time living in India. Mm. First time I lived in North, uh, New Delhi. Mm. I was student. At the time. No, not really. Yeah. I was in New Delhi, and I was a student at the time. Mm. Mm. Nothing to do with photography. Yeah. And this time it was like eye opening, and uh, I really lived for two years in Chennai. Mm. So most photos are taken in Tamil Nadu, except for the Buddhist monks. Mm. It was the most beautiful trip I did in Ladakh, mm. and I spent two weeks just photo um, photographing the Buddhist monks, mm. They're documenting their lives. So part of them are children. Mm. In the beginning, it didn't come as the whole, just about children. In the beginning, I was just taking photos of uh, each uh, religious rite, mm. children, adults. Most I was just documenting. Changed. Yes, I was documenting it, like what is going on, and uh, trying to be very biased. Like I'm, I'm trying to be very biased or not biased. By trying to be uh, no, no, like not, not taking on by yeah, yeah, yeah just, not just, this. just fact mm. this is fact mm. and then uh, actually it was Kasha uh, mm. the organizer who uh, looked through my different projects and she's like well, you're good with children yeah. and this is how it came up then I took some more photos of children mm. and this is how uh, the project came alive. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> yes, if you are not comfortable, subject won't be comfortable. Uh, can you uh, uh, go in the field? There is blood. Can you be? It's like some some physical uh, uh, problems you might. Uh, so I think it's very personal. Everybody is different. I want to ask another question. You know, being a person with a, of another skin color, mm -hmm. and very clearly, it's. You, you appear to be a foreigner. Yes. So I want to know uh, how has that affected, uh, if at all, you know, you, when you are uh, um, when you are uh, taking your photographs, does that come in the way? Does that affect your work? Um, and most of the time, I I do not. I get dressed like this. Uh, most of the time, it's just kurta pajama, uh, like is as much like like Indian women do, like kurta pajama. That's what I wear most of the times. E sometimes even covering my head if I'm going to very uh, conservative uh, communities. Still, people see I'm foreign, and no matter what I wear, people would see. And uh, sometimes uh, it's an advantage in the way like okay foreigners coming let her take photos sometimes it's a disadvantage it's like opposite we don't want her like she is foreigner and you have to talk uh, to people and be patient with people and see with it and sometimes you just have to let it go okay i'm not welcome i'm not welcome you should not force because there will be no good photos and uh, mm, yesterday I went to Parani and I was surprised some people were asking if I was Hindu from a uh, north, like somewhere from north. Or one time people mistook me for Pakistani <laughs> because of the blue eyes. So I guess I'm getting there then I'm being more assimilated to it. The, the main art is to become invisible. And for me, it's like triple hard than for all, like for people who live here, like for local people, because I, I, it's hard to be invisible. Yes, with white skin and blue eyes. Can you tell us something about the workshop you did with Raghurai, the Magnum workshop? Let's yes. About it. Uh, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, all he asked us is uh, to make photos. Nobody else. It, it, made like it's like he wanted something special he wanted something like he haven't he hasn't seen before so it was very hard it was very hard uh, I work hard I spend a lot of time talking to people trying to convince them because I was not welcome at the community where I was shooting 
So it was a lot of talking and seeing. After many hours of talking, they agreed to let me. I had to spend one night in slum, which was uh, scary, but at the same time I had to do it. And uh, Ragurai is a great personality. Uh, like it, it was just amazing to talk to him. Uh, he he's a talker. He, he's a talker and. Uh, uh, but he is very honest. I think it's important about teacher. If the work is not good, he's like no. He is just no, no, no. He would just reject all the photos. And uh, even if you have one good photo per day, it's already a great achievement. Uh, so I was very honored because he picked me to be uh, published in a British Journal uh, of Photography. So I was very happy. That's the work with the Taxi community in Yes, Italy. we were 12 uh, competing like to be published and I was happy because I won. <laughs> in the way, usually children when they want photos, they just run to me and they just jump in front of the camera and they just... Uh, Start making uh, pizza. Yes, yeah. it's, uh, this is different. This is what's different. It was like almost, I saw her just standing on the street and then it's just I started taking photos and she didn't move and it's like she just looked at me I don't know if she was sassy but it was more subtle than just taking a photo of me because she behaved like this for the whole evening like I, I saw her a couple of times during that evening and I wouldn't say that she did it for me for me I had a, um, they would do it anyway. I was there or I wasn't there. But, uh, and there were sometimes parents come and take photo of my child, take photo. It, it was amazing because it was not the situation. Like they would facilitate. It was, it was if I come with the camera, sometimes they would move away and I could take a photo. But there was no, oh, come, this is my child, take a photo. For them, then, then for, uh, it, photo yeah, for them it was more important what they did. Than, they were, I, I guess they were happy I came, but it wasn't like uh, jumping and saying, take a photo of me and take a photo. Tell us what you like about the exhibition. Um, I think uh, it's very, it's, in French it's uh, grandiose, because uh, I know Olia, uh, I meet her uh, about the travel of uh, Ladakh, and uh, I was with uh, Olia when she went to Ladakh, and uh, it's very fantastic to see uh, this photography here in Pondicherry. Uh, <laughs> uh, sometimes, <laughs> not not very really professional. I learned. Yes, I like I like photo. Yes. What is it about these photographs that you like the most? What is in the photograph that touches you? That makes you the, this uh, about this uh, this girl? I think uh, she's uh, very. She seems very well, very um, very young and very old. It's difficult to know uh, which, uh, which age, how old uh, is she. It's difficult to see and the, the eyes are very, very uh, fantastic. <laughs> Would you like to share something else with the Indian audience? Something else you want to share? I don't know. You know, I actually loved uh, my stay in India and I loved my experience. And I feel very sad to live in India after two years, actually. And, and you are very lucky photography-wise in the way there is always something happening. Like, I don't believe that students here tell, oh, we have nothing to take photos about. I mean, there is always something. And I mean, in Tamil Nadu, you have hundreds of festivals, hundreds. If you're not interested in festivals, still you have so rich life, like cultural life, different communities. Uh, you don't like the re topic of religion and maybe fishermen. You don't like uh, fishermen. I mean, there are environment. I mean, it's, it's just, uh, I think photography wise, it's a country of opportunities. So good luck to your students.